Ladies and welcome back to 303. We are now in the unstoppable Mr. Conrad's volume, chapter two, Your Fire. Let's make a couple of quick observations really quickly for your notes before we get into the reading. Often in life, things happen which we do not, two, two things about it. One, we do not predict that it's going to happen. In other words, it's kind of a surprise for us and often not in a good way. Number two, the things that happen often for us, we qualify as unfair. Unfair. Shouldn't have happened this way. We're going to read a really important moment in Mr. Conrad's life early in the Unstoppable volume. He wants to let you know why he came to the Unstoppable philosophy in the first place. A big part of it has to do with what happened to him personally. Let's read it. You're fired. Never in my life did I think I would hear those words, much less hear them on the radio. But that's how I unofficially heard I had been riffed. Reduction in force is what it's called. Back in 1985. A huge drop in enrollment due to the completion of a local power plant left a fellow teacher with too few students, so the district cut his program. Since he was tenured and I was the new kid on the block, he was given my job. I was left unemployed after just recently getting married, selling my old business, and moving 2,000 miles from home. To add insult to injury, as I already mentioned, I first heard about it on the local radio before I was officially given my pink slip, and it actually was pink. Losing your job is hard enough, but losing your job because someone else didn't have enough kids in his class, well, that's just unbelievable. But looking back on it now, it was one of the best things that has ever happened to me. As the saying goes, things work out best for those who make the best of the way things work out. I'd like to look at that line one more time. It's a fundamental one. Some of you will say, this is worth putting on a piece of paper inside my locker and seeing it again. Look at it. We'll read it one more time. Things work out best for those who make the best of the way things work out. I worked as the district maintenance man for a half year, plowing snow, hanging drywall, assisting the plumber electrician, generally feeling sorry for myself, until it hit me one day. You're getting paid to learn these different trades, and that changed everything. At the same time, many of the people in our town who had built the power plant could not sell their homes. When they left town, the banks repossessed their homes, and I purchased several of them using my maintenance skills to renovate them. I resold those homes at a much larger profit than the salary I could have made teaching. At the time, it was the biggest risk I had ever taken. After one year, the teacher who took over my job was asked to leave, and I got my teaching position back thanks to Dr. Charles Grove, the superintendent. However, the situation was dark and about to get darker. My old shop had fallen victim to pilferage and vandalism. The budget was thousands in the red and enrollment had dwindled to the point that the job became part-time. I was given one year to turn it around, or, as I was told by Dr. Grove, we'll have to shut it down, quote-unquote. As if that wasn't bad enough, at no time did they tell me Levi would be in my class. That would lead to my darkest hour. But when it's darkest, that's when the stars come out, a topic that we will look at when we meet Lesson 3, Chapter 3, later. Let's take a couple of quick notes here as we finish our reading of Chapter 2. First of all, the major theme focus of this chapter is sometimes life is unfair. Sometimes events happen in our life which are patently unfair. Things do not go the way that they are supposed to. Things do not go the way that we would like for them to go. And our natural response is to feel sorry for ourselves. Of course it is to ask, why did this happen to me? Back to an earlier comment. One of the primary arguments of the unstoppable volume, however, is to say that at the moment in our lives when really bad stuff starts to happen that we know is unfair, radically unfair, we have to find a way to work through and with those challenges. That is not easy. This will be one of the challenges of our volume and one of the fundamental understandings and teachings of the unstoppable philosophy. That is to say, when most normal people would just quit 
because it is an unfair situation. You've got to learn how to somehow find a way to get through. Now in the journals, you're going to be challenged to think about a moment in your life when something was unfair. By that we mean the following. Something happened to you beyond your control. Beyond your control. It wasn't something that you created for yourself, just like with Mr. Conrad. And yet you had to find a way to get through that situation that was unfair. Some of us are still dealing with something that is unfair in our life, and it does still bug us. We still ask this question, why did it have to happen to me? Again, that victim mentality will never, ever work for you because there's always a follow-up question. Well, then why that? Why that? But if we can begin to understand to ask the question, why did this happen for me? It's not that you're happy that it happened. No, no, no. Understand. It's not that you go, yay, I'm so glad that an unfair thing happens to me. No, no, no. But if you are in a situation you can't control and it is unfair, then it makes sense to ask, what can I learn from this experience? How do I move beyond it? How do I work through it? That will be the challenge, of course, of the Unstoppable Book. And in the next chapter, we'll see how Mr. Conrad himself had to do the very thing. Thank you.